quite cosy. It is very cosy, yeah. uh, Giles Martin, right now because uh, you know, one we're in Abbey Road Studios. There you are. Yeah. Um, which which is incredible for me to to be here today is a huge day, and I want you to tell Liverpool why it's such a big day for, for our city. Well, I guess I mean I can't speak on behalf of your city. Problem is a brilliant city, but we are uh, we're launching. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band at the Tate Gallery in Dolby Atmos, which is fully immersive. You just heard it here, Abbey. Ah. We mixed it here at Abbey Road. We're moving an entire rig up to Liverpool, and uh, and we thought, you know, Liverpool would be the first and best city to hear it in because without Liverpool, there'd be no Sergeant Pepper's. Absolutely not. Now you use the word uh, listen, then, but but it was more than that to me. It was it was a whole experience. So it's the, the album in full, start to finish, and. There were sounds I've never heard before. There were songs I'd, I'd forgotten because you kind of take them for granted. And, and when you listen to it and experience it like this, it, it really does open open your mind, doesn't it? Well, it's then when we are surrounded by, you know, in our pockets we have all the music in the world, and we're surrounded by music all the time, and we hear it. We don't really listen. And actually, if you think about the golden era of albums, Sgt. Pepper's only thirty six minutes long, and so you. You actually have to. You're, if you if you lock them in a room and, and make them listen to something, their eyes stop working and their and their their phones go away and they just go. This is what music's about. Mm. It takes you somewhere else. And I think that's what it does. And the fact we have this many speakers. I mean, Dolby Atmos is a fully immersive listening experience. You have a three dimensional. So it's like falling through. It's like the vinyl on a record melting. You fall into the disc into the room that the Beatles are in. And it's just it's something that you have to build the the structure in order to fully get it, and mm. that's what we're doing. So, so this is the way that the lads wanted us to experience this this music. And your dad, George Martin, this is exactly how he would have wanted us to experience this too, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, my dad was fully aware of of this technology because we did we did a project like this out in Vegas, we did a show called Love out in Vegas, and we he you know. Without had seven thousand speakers in a room, so he was he's well into this world, and the Beatles. Listen, Paul and Ringo have heard this; they love it. We did a, you know, we've done playbacks here, and we spent a while. And we actually created this this two years ago, but we were thinking about how we can get people to listen to it. We've had people come to Abbey Road, but you can't get that many people to mm. come to Abbey Road. It's a working studios. So it's taken this long to get together the tape and go, okay, can we build a space where, you know, just grandparents and grandchildren and parents and whoever can wander in and just experience something completely new that's been around for 50 years. Tell me about, about your dad, um, Giles, because obviously, you know, you're heavily into, into the music scene right now what, what would he think uh, at seeing you now and, and kind of what you do well he passed away i think uh, two and a half years ago now and i miss him every day but we work together i'm actually in this room we're in this is where i made the love uh show and soundtrack mm. with him he come in every come in once a, once a week and we go for dinner down the road and and i started out being his ears you know i was he was started losing his hearing so that's how i started and and he was extraordinarily proud uh, actually on his when he was when he was dying he, he took a long he died at the age of 90 so he had a good a good innings i said to him did you ever think you were bad at music dad and he said that was a strange question a strange question to ask me and i said well i was do i was doing a film this kingsman film at the time and i went but i got asked to do this and i think i can't i can't do it like, you know and he goes but you're you know you were you're better than i was i went i'm not I said, did you ever think that? Like, he went, no, I always thought it was brilliant. Yeah. And, 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 and he loved technology. He loved pushing things. He loved pushing boundaries. And that's what he was, that's what drove him, you know? What was it like growing up, um, you know, surrounded by your dad and, and these incredible musicians who your dad was, was friends with? What was it like as a boy living, living that life? It, it's, it's a hard thing to talk about because you don't know anything different. Uh, I got to compare it against. Mm. It was great. I mean, it was it was like it was a mixed bag. I mean, I spent a lot of time in studios when I was a kid. My dad built the studios in the West, out in the West Indies, and there were bands like, you know, I spent a lot of time with Ultravox, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wow. You know, on holiday, you know, it's just I just because we were we were basically kids who lived in the studios, mm. and so you know, you sort of slightly miss friends. Me and my sister would say we probably miss our friends quite a lot, but. I grew up in a world, I mean, 
you know, you, I never dreamt when I when I you know when I fell in love with music, which I sort of did at the age of fourteen. I never thought I'd be able to do it for a living, mm. to be honest. In fact, my dad told me I wouldn't be able to do it for a living. <laughs> um, and and you know, you never take it for granted. It's a weird thing. I mean, I guess for me, being in a studio is a completely natural environment for me, but I never take it for granted. Yeah. Well, listen, you you're fantastic, Bogan, and just to be sat here with you, where you do obviously feel at home, it is fantastic as well. Uh, just tell us why people should should book these tickets, which which are free, by the way, with Tate and National Museums Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, I, we you know we wanted we wanted to be free um, because you know it is a celebration and. People should go because they're going to experience them. They'll never, they're never, they're not going to experience anywhere else. I mean, we throw ourselves into this and we try and create something that you're going to remember forever. And there are so many times we, we don't experience new things. This is a new thing. This is a, th this is a, an experience that you're not going to get anywhere else. You know, you can go into the Tate Liverpool and you can, you can, experience the Beatles only in that place at that time how it is and that's why people should go okay check it out 19th of December it launches in Liverpool at the Dr Martin Luther King Jr building it's on the right the way through until the 9th of January and you need to check it out Giles thank you so much for thank chatting you. to us thank you and we can't wait for I'll see you up in Liverpool I'll see you there yeah cheers <laughs>